love. We hug them. We have a smile on our face. You know, God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. Come on, have a seat. You can pick whatever seat you want to. Let me introduce you to so-and-so and so. Let me show you so-and-so and so. It's fellowship time. It's a time where you can actually open up yourself and let your, we say, let your hair down. And just be real to somebody just coming through that door because you don't know what they're going through. They may be coming in with a heavy heart. They may be coming in saying, you know what? The Lord just directed my attention to come to this church this morning. I, I know the Lord brought me here. And he has something that he wants to say. So that's why fellowship is very important. You don't want to come into a church and sit down and everybody's like, uh, like Brother Jared says, uh, uh, baptizing pickle juice. Mad about everything, you know. And how's, what kind of greeting is that, you know? Or I like to say, uh, you've been second 27 and a half lemons. You know, if somebody comes in and sees you looking like that, they're not going to want to come back. That's not a good experience. So we want to make sure that we come in with joy and, with, you know, have a fellowship time with those that come in, our church member families and those that are coming in to visit. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, verse 5 says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forth on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We ought, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellowshippers unto the truth. And again, we're talking about having fellowship time, and we're very good at this also. When somebody is in need, somebody has passed away, it, uh, probably two minutes later, somebody's on the phone calling and saying, does that loved one uh, have need of something? We're going to take food over. We're going to go pray for you. Well, what, what else can we do to help? And it, it's not even a mechanical uh, act. And when I say mechanical act, I'm talking about sometimes people do it because it's a routine. This is not a routine for us here. It's just from our heart. It naturally comes from our heart. If somebody's going through something, somebody has lost a loved one, we get in action and we move on that person's behalf. They may have a need and, and maybe their cupboard is empty. And they say, you know what, I don't want to bother nobody. You know, we've heard that many times, you know, especially older people. I don't want to bother nobody or I have too much pride. I, I, I'm going to wing it. But we go, we're going to knock on the door, we're going to say, what do you need? How can we help you? And that's very, very important in this day and age. Many people feel like nobody cares about them. They may think, you know, I'm sitting here at, at home, you know, and it doesn't seem like I'm loved by anybody. But that's when we step in and we come into action and we say, you know what? You know, I haven't seen Brother So-and-So in, in two weeks. I wonder if they're all right. I haven't heard from Sister So-and-So in a month. I wonder if they're all right. Probably 90% of the time if we ask around, has somebody seen somebody? Somebody's going to have already talked to them. And that's the type of fellowship that we're talking about. And it's very important. I shared uh, a few months, uh, a month ago, about an individual that, you know, they hadn't seen him in, the, in an apartment moving around in, in a day. Because they, they were used to seeing him walking up and down the street every day. And, but they missed him that day and come to find out he, he had died in, in his home. So that's why it's important for us to stay engaged with each other and make sure that we're all right. All right. It's fellowship. So yes, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellowshippers to the truth. So not only when it comes to providing for those that have needs, uh, such as maybe food or uh, maybe to help cut the grass or help clean their house, but also to have fellowship when it comes to bringing the word of God and bringing the truth to them. You know, sometimes a person may lose a loved one and we know that they know the Lord, but at that moment they're angry. And all of us can be suspect of that. Don't think that you can be vulnerable to that truth. You can be in the Lord for 50 years or 60 years, and you may love, you lose that loved one. You may end up in the hospital, and they say, no, we've got to cut your leg off. Or you lose somebody that's very near and dear to you, or, or you lose your job. It could be anything. And you could be being in the Word of God for 50, 60, 70 years, and all of a sudden, you flip, and the switch goes off, and you get angry at God. And that's where we come in. You knock on that person's door and you say, you know, hey, hey, brother, hey, sister, we had to sing you in church. I'm not going back. Look what happened to me. Look what happened to my loved one. He said he loved me. God doesn't love, you know, and all that stuff's going to come out of you that you didn't even know that was in you. And you stop going to church. And that's where the believers come in at. We rally around that individual and we say, you know what? We know you're hurting. We know you're suffering. And we're here for you. 
We're going to get around you. We're going to pray for you. Whatever you need, we're here. That's what it's all about. Amen. Verse 9 says, I wrote unto the church, but thy trophies, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us now. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, praying with us or against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and cast them out of the church. Let me tell you what he did. So the church, there were some missionaries that came to the church. And they came to bring the word of God. So it's the same thing as like what I do. You know, every, every now and then I travel and go to different, another state. I go to California. Or I may be called to go to another city or to another church. Uh, bringing the word of God. Uh, when I was in college, we used to, we'd be missionaries. We'd go to different churches. We'd share the gospel. Or we'd be on the street corners. And we would share the word of God. Or whatever we needed to do. In this particular case, these missionaries had come to the church. They were coming to preach the word of God. They were real. They weren't fake. And this man did not want them to do that. He, he wanted to run them out. And him being a leader, as I just said earlier, he got the, he got the big head. He let, it get to his, he, got, he let his leadership position get to his head. And he was really all about power more than anything else. And that's why this took place. And so in this particular letter right here, John is talking to the believers and he's encouraging them and thanking them for staying true to the faith and not, you know, not letting him... Um, try to run all over them. And we see that happen many, many times where people that are leaders in the church go a different direction and they're no longer about caring for the sheep. They, all they care about now is lining up their pockets. All they care about now is packing up the pews just to say, I got 10,000 people in my church. They are forgetting the first love and they're forgetting the job of the pastor, which is to be the sheep over the, be the shepherd over the sheep. And so this man here, he was all about taking control he was all about power. He was not doing it uh, the right way. So verse 11 says now, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. This is important. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men and of the truth itself, yea, and we also bear record, and we know that our record is true. If I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee, but I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. And I think this, I love the way that these epistles, um, and even through the New Testament, how they, end, how they end the letters, I think that's beautiful. And basically what we're learning right here is that we need to always follow the truth and not to follow the evil, not to follow the negativity, not to follow the lies. That's basically what he's saying in that particular section right there. And so once again, what we're learning in 2024 right now, more than ever, in this season right now, in this month right now, the next few months, or the next few years, however long Jesus Christ is here, we've got to stay in the truth. We've got to guard the truth with our hearts. We cannot allow anybody to give us the false doctrine and giving us uh, things that are not true about the Word of God. Amen. 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 So these three, we, we finish with these three epistles right here, and they have dealt with the fellowship with love, with truth, and dealing with our enemies. Now we know how to do that. And we look at all these, these gospels we just discussed these uh, past few weeks. That's what it's all about. It's about love. It's about fellowship. And they talk about truth probably more than anything. Walking in the truth of God's word. And we should not forget that ever. Amen. Wherever you go, take the word of God with you and let it be true. And if somebody tries to dispute that, you come back with that word again. Come back with that word again. Come back with that word. Just like the commercial. How we know those commercials, we, they repeat over and over again. Repeat with the word of God. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. God is the father of, he's the true father. He's the one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that we depend upon the Holy Spirit to carry us from day to day to day. Um, during our acting, I think, it was, I think it was yesterday, I was talking about uh, my sister when they were little kids. And how they went to school. You used to have, you know, you could talk about the Bible in school at that time. And she talked about how the teacher had taught them the 23rd Psalm. And so she, I was reading the Psalm. I said, that's good. I said, that's real good. And I recited the Psalm back to her. And then she went. She said, oh, no, no, that's not right. That's not right. I said, it's not. Oh, that's not right. You're not supposed to say it that way. She said, my teacher said, at the end, she said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And so 
but she did not forget she even though she emphasized the way that teacher taught her she wanted to let me know and i will dwell in the house of the lord and i said you know what you are right today we need to say that we will dwell in the house of the lord amen, amen. Amen. So let's have that same fire for the Lord like my sister did when she was six years old. Amen. 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 Are we out of time? Oh, wait, am I good? Okay, we're out of time. All right, let us, uh, we're going to get ready to close out in prayer. Brother Jared, will you close us out in prayer, please? Yes. Father, we just uh, want to thank you this morning, Lord God, that you took time to handwrite a letters, many of them to us, to follow, Lord God, following the truth, following how to love, following, Lord God, how to pick up on false doctrine and just mainly, Lord Jesus, uh, fellowshipping with each other, building each other's up like iron sharpens iron. And Lord, we want to thank you today for the word that was brought to us here by Sister Joab. And Father, I pray you bless her in a special way and bless those that are here. And Lord God, as we step into the uh, message this morning, I pray for the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven. And Lord, may we understand how important life is, who we are, where we are, and uh, who we serve. And we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, for it's in your precious and holy name. Amen.